You are not even a doctor. You can't do anything. It doesn't make any sense for you to be there. Of course, our daughter is better off with you than with me. My husband was appealing that there would be no problem if he went on an overseas trip under the current circumstances. As I listened to him, I felt the little love I had left for my husband disappeared completely. My name is Alice, a 27 year old housewife. I met my husband Felix, who is 10 years older than me, at the company I started working for after I graduated from college. Although my husband and I were in different departments, we started talking when he saved me from a drunken senior colleague at a company drinking party. And we started our relationship that ended in marriage two years later. My father died when I was very young, and my mother raised me as a single mother. When my mother was informed about my marriage, she was so happy that she cried. After four years of working, I was enjoying my job and planned to continue working after marriage, but my husband asked me to stop working. We can make our living with only my salary. That's more than enough. Yes, but I don't want to quit. I enjoy my job. Why? Other women have a hard time working and doing house chores and raising children. But Alice, you could be a full time housewife. What's wrong with that? My husband is a quick witted, older, and well spoken. So my opinion was never recognized when we had a discussion. My husband thinks that this is the best way for me. When he says he's saying it because he loves me, I can't argue with him. Without a resolution to our discussions, I became pregnant and had to resign from my job due to severe morning sickness and the risk of premature delivery. My husband was overjoyed that I resigned. Although I wanted to continue working, I was secretly relieved that I didn't have to argue with my husband anymore. However, I soon began to regret my decision to have left my job. Once I was in a stable period of pregnancy, and my condition became stable too, my husband started to pay only $300 a month for living expenses. Utilities and rent were deducted from our bank account, but $300 for two adults was hard to meet. My husband did not even pay my phone bill. When I asked him for more money to put into the house, he refused. You don't need a phone because you are a housewife. He told me that if I didn't have enough money for living expenses, I should just pay from my own savings. I had only been working for three years, but I had saved money through part time jobs since college. So I had about $2,000 in savings, but I didn't want to touch that money for the sake of our child's future. I felt threatened by my husband's attitude, so I made every effort not to use my savings. However, during my pregnancy, I absolutely could not give up my smartphone in case something happened to me. So I switched to a local carrier and paid the fees from my savings. I felt suffocated since the newlyweds because I felt like my husband was monitoring me. But my mother and mother in law supported me. My mother in law loved on her only son, my husband. But she also cared for me as his wife. She was concerned about my many troubles in the early stage of my pregnancy and regularly sent me vegetables and daily necessities so that I would not have to carry heavy things home. I was so grateful. It's natural to take care of someone who became your daughter in law. She told me like that. As soon as I got married, I noticed that my husband is committing moral harassment. But my in laws are very nice people, so I believe that their son would be a good father who would love his child once our baby is born. My mother also bought many necessary things for the newborn, such as clothes and stroller. As I stared at my belly, which was getting bigger by the day, I told myself that my husband would surely change after the birth of our child. However, my hopes were shattered when my water broke at home. 
the contractions were getting shorter and shorter, and I was about to call the hospital when my water broke at home. This was my first birth. How could my water broke at home? I was panicked. I called my husband for help, but he looked at me and said unthinkable. Whoa, you are dirty. You are never getting in my car, so take a cab. With that, my husband went back to his room. I was shocked and cried, but I didn't have time to cry. I called a labor cab I had reserved and went to the hospital alone with the hospitalization kit I had prepared. The nurses at the obstetrician's office were surprised to see me at the hospital alone in the middle of the night with my water breaking. Wasn't there anyone to accompany you? I could only reply with a wry smile to the nurse. Then I gave birth to a healthy girl. I needed to tell my husband, but I was anxious to see how he would react. But my husband was so happy to see our baby. As if he had forgotten that he said I was dirty when my water broke. And he immediately left his workplace and came to the hospital. It was only through the window, but my husband seemed thrilled to see our daughter. But I could not forget what he had said and done during my pregnancy, and what he had said to me when my water broke. I asked my father in law to name our daughter. More and more people these days don't like their in laws naming their children. But I didn't want my husband to name her, and I didn't think he would let me name her. My daughter was named Lara. After leaving the hospital, I managed to do housework and raise my child with the help of my mother and mother in law. My husband only gave Lara milk once in a while and never bathed or changed her diaper. But this was better than I imagined. But I couldn't trust him anymore because my husband would make me take pictures of him feeding our daughter and then post the pictures on social media to show off. He received many comments about what a good husband he was and how people wanted their husbands to learn from him. And my husband felt satisfied. In reality, however, when he finished taking the picture, he would interrupt watching after Lara, even though she is still drinking her milk, and let me do it. My husband doesn't take care of our daughter at all, except when taking pictures. The situation was further aggravated when my daughter started crying at night. My husband and I had separate bedrooms, but it seems that her crying reached him, and he got angry at me for being too noisy. On top of that, he would say, what a useless mother you are, if you can get your child to stop crying. And, you can't even live without me, you are so useless. I was mentally drained from the lack of sleep due to my daughter's crying at night, and I could not stop crying whenever my husband said such things to me. Divorce crossed my mind, but my mother-in-law, father-in-law and mother are all convinced that things are amicable between us. Besides, I was not confident that I, a housewife, would be able to raise my daughter on my own. Then one day, I received a call that my mother had been involved in a traffic accident and had been rushed to the hospital. When I took my daughter to the hospital, my mother was still in surgery. The surgery was a success, but my mother did not wake up immediately. With my four months old daughter in tow, I couldn't stay at the hospital forever, so I went home, even if I wanted to be by my mother. I had to prepare dinner, but I was in no mood to do so. I was sitting idle, taking care of my daughter at the minimum, and doing nothing else when my husband came home. You didn't prepare dinner? What are you doing? My husband yelled at me, but I wasn't scared at all probably because I was distracted by my mother. My mother had an accident, and she hasn't regained consciousness. I want to stay with her at the hospital tomorrow, so can you take care of Lara while I'm there? I can't. I'm going on an overseas trip tomorrow with my friends. 
I didn't know what my husband was talking about. Wait a minute. What overseas trip? You didn't tell. Besides, you're going on an overseas trip at a time like this? I don't need to ask your permission for whatever I'm going to spend my hard earned money on. I'm not talking about money. I'm saying that my mom is in a lot of trouble, and I want you to stop traveling and stay with Lara. Of course, I don't intend to let my husband do all of the care of Lara, but I wanted my husband to be there in case something happened. But my husband sighed, and they said to me, as if he were telling a child who was not a good listener, Your mother is not going to make it. Your being there for her won't help. Then you'd better take care of your daughter. Even your mother would want that. What are you talking about? Why are you being so horrible? You're the one being awful. You're trying to take all my fun for someone who can't be saved anymore. I will be home in time for her funeral, so let me go on a relaxing trip. I thought my husband was not human. No human being could have said this. I decided to let my husband do what he wanted, thinking that any more would be a waste of time. Okay then. If you understand, then fine. My husband smiled in satisfaction at my response and went to his room, perhaps to prepare for the trip. Until then, I had told myself that my husband's unreasonable words and actions were because he loved me. However, I can't believe that my husband loves me when he goes on an overseas trip under such circumstances and leaves me alone. I have pretended not to notice until now, but I'm sure that to my husband, I'm a wife who is naive and obedient. However, I have come to my senses. Growing up in a single mother household, I felt lonely without a father, and I didn't want my daughter to feel that way. However, I realized that the reason I missed my father so much was that I had fond memories of him being kind to me. I decided to divorce my husband because I thought he was no longer necessary for my daughter. My husband was just going on an overseas trip, so it was convenient for me to prepare for the divorce without his knowledge. The next day, my husband, who knew nothing about it, left for his overseas trip in a good mood. Fortunately, my mother regained consciousness. She said that if she works hard at the rehabilitation, the after effects of the accident will hardly remain. When I told my mother that I was going to divorce Felix, she was surprised but said she would support me. However, I could see that even in the event of a divorce, if I didn't have something in my favor, I would be back down. My husband would never admit his fault and there was no way he would accept something that would be to his advantage. A speedy divorce after two years of marriage and four months after the birth of our daughter. That would be bad damage for him, so Felix would want to avoid it. Then, I took a look at my husband's social networking sites. I thought that if my husband was so enthusiastic on social networking sites about being a good husband and good father, there might be something to it. I checked his social networking site and found an unbelievable post in which he said he left his daughter with his mother and traveled abroad with his wife feeling like newlywed. I continued to check and found that my husband had also posted pictures of a woman he claimed was his wife. Since they were all pictures of her hands and her back with no face in the picture, and she was almost the same height as me. Someone might think it was me. However, it is clear that the woman is not me. This was the first time I knew that my husband was cheating on me. I had been preoccupied with child care and my husband's moves, but when I thought about it more carefully, I realized that everything was wrong. I had a little bit of evidence of my husband's moral harassment. So I thought that if I combined these social networking photos with the evidence, we would definitely get a divorce. After that, 
I was a little overwhelmed, but I told my in-laws that I was divorcing Felix. At first, they tried to discourage me from divorcing him for the sake of our daughter. But when I told them the reason for the divorce, my in-laws were furious with my husband. They then told me the most outrageous thing. In fact, my husband had been engaged to a woman about four years before he married me. But the engagement had been called off because of his moral harassment. My in-laws had been concerned about me since the beginning of our marriage because they were worried that Felix might be morally harassing me and that we would get divorced. My in-laws got down on their knees and apologized to me, but I have nothing against them. They promised to be fully on my side and told me that if my husband did not pay alimony or child support, they would pay it instead. After that, I continued to check my husband's social networking sites and noticed something. In the comment section, where people had been praising my husband, I began to see comments criticizing him for leaving our four-month-old daughter with his mother while he traveled abroad. The critical comments, which were few at first, increased each time he posted a picture of the trip. Seeing this, I thought that I could use this. When all the divorce preparations were over, I saw a post on my husband's social media that the happy time was over and he was going back home. My husband even wrote down the time of his flight, so I waited until he is on his way and posted. I'm the wife of this man. The woman in the picture is not me. I wrote that in the comment section. I was skeptical that people would believe me, but the comment section got so many reactions faster than I had imagined. It seems that people who had known my husband since his school days and people from his company were watching his social media. And in no time at all, the comment section was overflown with his misdeeds in his school life to the fact that he had broken off his former engagement due to moral harassment. I laughed as the comment section told of the end of my husband's smooth sailing life. It matched well with his caption, The happy time is over. Later, when my husband came home in a good mood, he still hadn't been on social media. I asked him for a divorce. Divorce me. Are you sulking? I'm sorry, you will be in good mood soon. He gave me an accessory as a souvenir. But I'm not happy because I know from social media posts that my husband sent a more expensive accessory of the same brand to his adulterous partner. I don't want that. Please divorce me. Wait a minute. What's going on? He suddenly sounded downright flirtatious, as if he could tell from my attitude that I really wanted a divorce. My husband tried to put his hand on my shoulder, and when I shook it off, he looked annoyed for a moment. If I had me my usual self, I would have tried hard to put my husband in a good mood. But now, to my own surprise, I felt nothing. My husband became more and more impatient with my unusual attitude and began to shake his head. Do you know what you're doing? Are you taking fatherhood away from our daughter? Can you support a child by yourself, even though you are a housewife? The money will be fine. I will work like hell. It's not going to be okay for a naive person like you. You just have to listen to me all the time. My husband denies everything if I try to do something he doesn't like. Having had the experience of leaving my job in a way that caused problems for people in my company, I thought that Felix was right. I should have resigned as soon as I got married. However, I'm not going to follow my husband's lead anymore. You're the naive one. What are you talking about? In these times when the world is so strict about adultery, how can you be traveling with an adulterer when your wife's mother is unconscious? He didn't expect me to know that he was having an affair. My husband obviously started to get upset. Though, ah, I know what you're talking about. 
Now you're going to make up some damning story and get alimony from me, right? Why don't you look at your social networking sites? My husband rushed to look at his social media, and his face turned pale. What is this? Everyone was fooled, so I just wrote the truth. Don't be silly! My husband yelled at me loudly, but I was not afraid of him, as I was fully prepared. I've already told your parents. I'm also consulting a lawyer who is good at divorce. You! Do you know what you're doing? You don't have time to deal with me, don't you? Why don't you do something about that social networking site? My husband is desperately trying to do something, as if he thought it was indeed a bad situation. In the meantime, I left the divorce papers and left our house. However, there was no way my divorce from my husband would go smoothly. So we both decided to get a lawyer. At first, my husband was very stubborn, but his reputation at work seems to be going downhill, and I could see that he was becoming more and more exhausted. In fact, the woman who broke off the engagement due to moral harassment and the current adulterer are the both from the same company. The adulterer left the company because it became difficult for her to stay in the company. She was in a relationship within the company and had to break up with her boyfriend as well. There is no way you can get a divorce. And if you get a divorce, I will ask for alimony. My husband said like this, but now he started to say that he would get back together with me if it were now. I will divorce you, so don't ask for alimony or child support. Then he said this, and suddenly he would say, I love you. Please give me a second chance. He changed his attitude a hundred times, but of course I ignored all of them. In the end, the divorce was finalized in a way that all my claims were accepted. After that, my ex-husband's reputation at work fell to the ground, and his boss recommended that he voluntarily resign from his job. My husband got angry and said, I don't want to work at this kind of company. I will quit on my own. He's now living with part-time jobs because he can't find another job. I received both alimony and child support in one lump sum, so I don't care about that. After that, my mother was able to rehabilitate and was not left with any after effects at all. I have successfully found a job and I'm raising my daughter with my mother's help. I have my hands full with my daughter, but it was a surprise when my mom got a boyfriend. The boyfriend's wife passed away years ago, and he raised his daughter by himself. He and his daughter have been very good to us. My daughter doesn't have a father, but she has many people who take care of her and don't make her feel lonely. My husband tried to remarry, but my mother-in-law said to that woman who came to greet the marriage, this son of mine is a moral harasser and has broken off an engagement and he is also divorced for moral harassment and adultery. Is that still okay with you? She asked her and that's why she ran away. My ex-husband was so shocked to see the kind and gentle mother-in-law say such a thing. Since the incident on social networking sites, my ex-husband who had been abandoned even by his friends from school days, realized that he had no allies at all. And now he is living a solitary and simple life alone in a small apartment.